Suppose we have a thin lens of focal length f1 and we put in contact with it another thin lens of focal length say f2 then these two thin lenses in contact can be thought of as one giant effective lens and so the question is what will be the focal length of this effective lens how will it be connected to f1 and f2 so let's draw our principal axis and since we're dealing with very thin lenses over here, we can totally neglect their thickness. And so we are assuming that their optic centers are at the same point. So to figure out the focal length of this effective lens, we'll do what we always do. We just shoot parallel rays of light and see where they get focused. So if we shoot parallel rays of light on this and find out where the rays get focused, that point itself will represent the effective principal focus and then that length will represent the effective focal length. So let's go ahead and shoot two parallel rays of light. If you look at this ray along the principal axis, then it is passing through the optic center and so this ray will go undeviated. And this ray of light is going to bend twice, once here and once over here. And in such cases, to draw ray diagrams, what we're going to do is first we're going to neglect this second lens. We're going to assume only the first lens exists. So in the absence of the second lens, where would this ray go? Well, since this ray is parallel to our principal axis, it has to pass through its principal focus. And the rays of light would have been focused at this point, and so the image would have been formed at this point. But that is neglecting the second lens. So if we bring the second lens into the picture, this ray of light will bend further, and we'll draw that in a while. But the important thing is that this point, which was the image due to the first lens, now becomes the object for the second lens. And we've seen this before. This is the general way in which we tackle problems. When we have multiple reflections or refractions, we always take the image in the first stage as the object for the next stage. So this point, let me just write that down. So this point over here, that point is now going to be the object for our second lens. So let's write that. That's going to be the object for lens two for lens two. And now where will this ray go? Well, to do that, now let's only concentrate on the second lens and let's only concentrate on the incident rays on the second lens. Now, if you look at the incident rays carefully, you can see that the incident rays themselves are converging rays of light. And our lens is going to converge it even further. Now, if the incoming rays were parallel, those rays of light would have been converged at this point. Since the incoming rays themselves are converging, they will get converged even closer to our lens. Can you see that? Even closer, somewhere even closer to our lens. And so the final image is formed somewhere over here, somewhere at this point. And so if you now look at the complete picture, what we are seeing is that the parallel rays of light are eventually getting focused at this point, which means if you think from that effective lens point of view, then we can say that this itself is where the parallel rays of light are being focused, and so this must be the effective principal focus. So we'll call this as the effective principal focus. And this would be the effective focal length, and we need to figure out how much that is. So again, if we bring back the two lenses, how do we figure out this length? Well, if you look at the second lens again, one more time, just focus on the second lens. We've already seen that this is the object for the second lens because that's where the incident rays of light on this lens appear to meet. Then after refraction, the rays of light meet over here. That means this is the image for our second lens. So this would be image, image for lens two. Lens two, this part over here would be the image. And we also know what's the focal length of the second lens, that's F2. That means we know all three. So we can connect them directly by using the lens formula. So highly encourage you to pause the video over here and see if you can use the lens formula and connect them. All right, let's do this. The lens formula tells us one over the focal length is equal to one over the image distance V minus, minus one over U. So let's apply this for lens two. 
So for length 2, the focal length is f2. So 1 over f2. That's going to be equal to 1 over the image distance. The image is this, and so the image distance itself is the effective focal length. So 1 over f effective minus 1 over the object distance. And the object distance is this point, which is the focal length of the first lens. So that's f1. 1 over f1. And we have connected them. And so to figure out what this is, all we have to do is add 1 over f1 on both sides. So 1 over effective, f effective, is going to be, since we're adding it on both sides, we'll get 1 over f1, 1 over f1, plus 1 over f2. And there we have it. That is the connection between the effective focal length and the individual focal lengths. And here's the interesting thing. Instead of just two lenses, what if you had a third lens over here with some, say, focal length f3? Then you can continue this. Now you can treat this as the object for the third lens. And then the new image would be now the new effective focal length. Again, you can use a lens formula. And then you will find then you will find that the effective, overall effective focal length would be 1 over f1 plus 1 over f2 plus, plus 1 over f3. And I highly encourage you to try that exercise yourself. And you will see that we can continue this. If you use four lenses, we can just keep on doing 1 over f4. For n lenses, we can just keep on doing that. But the important thing to remember is while using this formula, the focal lengths of converging lenses are positive, but for a diverging lens, the focal lengths will become negative. That's the only thing to take care of. And of course, in practice, we cannot use this formula for n lenses, because eventually when we put too many lenses together, the effective lens becomes thick enough, and so our approximations fail. So of course, theoretically, you can use it for n lenses, but it can be only used as long as we're using the thin lens approximations.